Have you ever wondered what viruses are made of? What gives them the ability to infect and multiply so rapidly? It's a fascinating, albeit complex, world of molecular structures that make up these microscopic invaders. At their core, they're composed of three key components. The nucleic acid, which carries their genetic blueprint, a protective protein coat known as the capsid, and in some cases, an outer envelope derived from the host cell. Now let's delve deeper into each of these components and unravel the mystery of viral structure. At the heart of every virus lies its genome, a single type of nucleic acid, either DNA or RNA, but never both. This genome is the master blueprint, the instruction manual, if you will, for the virus's life cycle. It's fascinating to note that the size of these genomes can vary widely, from a compact 3,000 base pairs to a sprawling 1.2 million base pairs. Now there are two broad categories of viruses, RNA viruses and DNA viruses, named rather simply after the type of nucleic acid they carry. As a virus invades its host, it uses this genome to hijack the host's cellular machinery, replicating itself and furthering its infectious mission. But the genome's structure also plays a pivotal role. Some viruses carry single-stranded nucleic acids, while others have double-stranded ones. Both formats come with their own advantages and challenges for the virus. In the case of RNA viruses, we can further classify them into positive and negative sense RNA. The distinction? Well, positive sense RNA is ready to rock and roll. Its structure, running from 5 to 3, can be directly translated into proteins. It's like having a recipe that's ready to cook. Negative sense RNA, on the other hand, is a bit more complicated. Its structure is reversed running from 3 to 5, which means it can't be directly translated into proteins. It's more like having a recipe in a foreign language. Before the virus can start cooking, or in this case, replicating, this RNA needs to be transcribed into positive sense RNA. So, while the viral genome may seem like a simple string of nucleic acids, it's actually a complex and finely tuned machine. Its structure and composition dictate not only the virus's capabilities, but also its strategy for survival and replication. So, the viral genome is the blueprint. But how is this blueprint protected? Let's move on to the next component. Surrounding the viral genome is a protective protein coat known as the capsid. This robust shell is not a mere container, but a critical component in the life cycle of a virus. Let's dive in and explore the intricate structure and function of the capsid. The capsid is a polymeric structure, meticulously assembled from smaller units known as capsomers. These capsomers are the building blocks of the capsid and are composed of different types of proteins. Intriguingly, these proteins are not externally sourced but are encoded by the very genome they protect. The viral genome, using the host cell's protein synthesizing machinery, translates these proteins. This ingenious method ensures a perfect fit for the viral genome within the capsid. The combination of the capsid and the enclosed nucleic acid is referred to as the nucleocapsid. Now, the capsid is not just a passive shield, it plays a proactive role in the survival and proliferation of the virus. It protects the viral genome from the harsh external environment, fending off physical and chemical stresses that could damage the precious nucleic acid. But its role is not limited to defense. The capsid also sports attachment sites like molecular velcro that enable the virus to adhere to potential host cells. This adhesion is the first step towards a successful infection. But the capsid's function doesn't stop at adhesion. Once attached, the capsid aids the virus in penetrating the host cell. It's like an armored vehicle, not just protecting its passenger, but also breaching the defenses to deliver its cargo right to the heart of the enemy territory. As we unravel the capsid, we see it's more than just a protective shell. It's a sophisticated tool, tailored to the needs of the virus, aiding in both protection and infection. It's a testament to the intricate and efficient design inherent in these microscopic entities. However, not all viruses stop at the capsid. Some add an extra layer of complexity, the envelope. Some viruses come with an added layer of sophistication, a lipid bilayer membrane known as an envelope. This envelope isn't something that the virus creates on its own. Instead, it's borrowed, or more accurately, hijacked from the host's plasma membrane. This is a perfect example of how crafty and efficient viruses can be, using the resources of their host to their advantage. 
The envelope is composed of lipid bilayers, just like the host's plasma membrane. But it's not just a simple copy. The virus adds its own touch, incorporating virus-specific proteins into the envelope, also known as glycosylated membrane proteins or matrix proteins. These proteins, often seen as viral spikes or knobs projecting outside the viral envelope, are the virus's signature, a mark of its identity. But these proteins are more than just a calling card. They serve a critical function in the life cycle of the virus. They act as attachment sites, the points where the virus latches onto a host cell. This is the first step in the invasion process, the moment when a virus begins to turn a host cell into a virus factory. So, the envelope is not just a protective layer, it's a tool, a key piece of the virus's strategy, a means to infiltrate and take over host cells. So, we now have a clear picture of what makes up a virus. Let's summarize. The world of viruses is intricate and complex, but we've managed to break it down into three main components. First, the nucleic acid, the viral genome, is the essence of a virus, containing all the information needed for its replication. It can be either DNA or RNA, single or double-stranded, linear or circular. Then we have the capsid, a protein coat that safeguards the precious nucleic acid. It's a polymeric structure made of subunits called capsomers, encoded by the virus itself. The capsid also plays a crucial role in the virus's ability to attach to and penetrate the host cell. The last component, found only in some viruses, is the envelope. This lipid bilayer membrane derived from the host's plasma membrane also houses virus-specific proteins, aiding in the virus's identification and entry into host cells. Understanding the molecular structure of viruses is the first step towards combating them. Knowledge is indeed our greatest weapon.